All right. Well, welcome to Tuesday's Tools on Purpose at the Business on Purpose podcast. Tuesdays are all about equipping you all with the tools that you need to run your business with intention and purpose. Our mission here at Business on Purpose is to liberate business owners from chaos so they can make time for what matters most. My name is Patrice Miles, and I'm one of the coaches on the team. And you guys know every Tuesday, I love to dive into the world of tools because in a world where your time is your most precious asset, finding those right tools to streamline your operations can really make all the difference. So in each episode, I love to bring you interviews with experts. We share success stories, provide step-by-step guides to empower you. But remember, It's not just about having the right tools. You do actually have to use them. So I am excited to bring you week four of our six-week series on ownership preservation, legal strategies for safeguarding your business with Sammy Diab out of Diab Law Firm in Houston, Texas. Today's topic is workforce papering. So Sammy, again, welcome and thanks so much for joining us. Hi, Patrice. Thanks. Thanks for hosting me. And for those listeners that are just tuning in to this week's episode and haven't heard from you in the previous episodes, tell us just a little bit about yourself. Sure. So my name is Sammy Diab. I'm the principal attorney here at Diab Law Firm PLLC. We help businesses avoid legal problems and help them through whatever legal problems that may already exist. We have clients across industries and um, across both the state and the country. Awesome. Well, Sammy, tell me, what in the world is workforce papering? Yes. So so this is essentially classification and treatment of your workforce. And so what we mean by that is if you have a worker who is a contractor, there are certain expectations and standards that you should meet when you, with regard to the way you treat that worker. And the way you work with a contractor should differ from the way that you work with your actual full-time employees. You shouldn't treat them the same way. And if you do, then uh, you, know, you could find your business facing a higher standard of care than it otherwise would have. Okay. Okay. So it sounds like we're talking a lot of like 1099 contractor versus W-2. Is that right? Exactly right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so talk to me about how one of our listeners, our small business owners should be using workforce papering in their business. Right. So if you have some folks who are 1099 contractors, they should ideally have, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of discuss the factors that most courts would consider when examining this issue. Um, And of course, some of the factors can vary from state to state naturally, but generally this issue kind of pervades all states here in the U.S. So some of these factors are, do they have control over the way they accomplish the work? Or are you dictating it as they should if, as they should if they're a contractor, or are you dictating the specific ways and times that they're doing the work. How are you paying them? Are you paying them with the frequency and by the methods that you would for a full-time employee? Or are they being paid by the project, for example, as you would normally expect a contractor to be paid? Are they being assigned work on a project by project basis or task by task basis? Or are they constantly on the standby as though they were full-time employees. You know, are you controlling the time, the times that they're accomplishing the work? Do they have the right to turn down projects, for example, or are they informally obligated to do it unless they get, you know, quote unquote, fired as though they were an employee? These are all some of the factors that, that we consider when examining whether you're properly treating and properly papering a contractor as opposed to an employee. And then what would be a best practice for a business owner to document this 1099 contractor versus W-2 contractor? So the most, the, the most straightforward one is contracts. Hence, hence a, a workforce papering, right? If you have a contractor, you should probably have them sign some sort of contractor agreement. And that agreement should set forth plainly that, you know, this relationship, it does not attempt to establish a partnership or an employment relationship. This is a contractor relationship. 
And so that is one of the most obvious ways. The other ways is just as a matter of systems within the business. Um, business should be careful about controlling the time and method and ways that the contractors accomplish their work, the way you pay them, you know, if their payment resembles like you would, you know, bi-monthly wage payments, like for an employee, you know, that's, that's a concern you should probably differentiate the way you pay them if you can. And of course you don't have to be perfect. It doesn't, you don't have to meet every one of these. It's you courts usually use a balance, a balance of all of these factors. So, you know, you don't have to score a perfect hundred if you will, but certainly the, these are the ways that, that you would help protect against this. Okay. Okay. And you had cut out a little bit when you had talked about the agreement. Did you call it a subcontractor mm -hmm. agreement? Is that what you called it? A contractor agreement. Contractor agreement. Just wanted to confirm yeah. that that was what sure. you called it. So right. basically they need to have a contractor agreement in place that spells out exactly what that 1099 relationship looks like. Right. Correct. Okay. Sounds good. Is there any other best practices that our business owners should know about in regards to workforce papering? No, I think we've done a pretty good job of, of overviewing it today. Okay. And then I'm sure, Sammy, that it is something you could help them with if that is a contract that they need to get put in place in their business. Sure. Absolutely. And, and I'm always happy to speak with anyone. Great. And so, What's the best yeah. way for them to contact you? Yes. So you can call us at 713-588-1657, or you can email me directly. My, my email address is sammy at diablawfirm.com. Awesome. And for those of you listening, um, you can visit our YouTube channel um, to get that information. But otherwise, Sammy, thanks so much for joining us today. Of course. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Patrice. So guys, that is a wrap for Tuesday's Tools on Purpose. Enjoy your new tool, Workforce Papering. But remember, every small action can lead to big results. So what action are you going to take today in regarding to preserving your business through workforce papering. Make sure to write it down and then go and implement. For those of you all that are just tired of living in chaos and you're ready to start actually working on your business instead of in it, I would love to show you how you can finally start seeing some return on investment in the areas of your time, money, and a business that can truly run without you. If that's something that you've wanted, but you just don't know the path to get there, it's okay. Just schedule a discovery call with me and together we can figure out what that roadmap might look like for you. Just email me either at Patrice at mybusinessonpurpose.com. Or if you're watching, you can scan the QR code that Kevin's going to put up to set up that discovery call. And last but not least, we always have our healthy business owner assessment if you're brave enough to take it. Again, Kevin's going to put up that QR code and the URL if you want to take our healthy business owner assessment. Again, a zero is horrible, but a 40 is a perfect score. So simply take the test and you can find out how healthy your business really is. Otherwise, guys, I'll see you next Tuesday. Thanks so much.